is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. Excuse me as I rock on. That's Went Away by Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane out of Martinez, California. That's out of the Cut and Dry album. Check them out at DorothyLaneMusic.com. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ruel's Running Podcast. It's another episode. I'm your host, like Anna said at the top of the show, this is Ruel. Amadam, that is. How is everybody doing? <clears throat> I am uh, doing good. And, uh, yeah, I uh, <laughs> I have, uh, I guess, a, a lot of positive changes going on. And <clears throat> I'm happy that things sort of had come together to get me to this point. And it's still really early, but... It's nice to see over, I guess, over the past week, see some visible changes. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it, it all started, it, it, it wasn't one thing, it was sort of like, uh, well, let me first just say, if you are a new listener, welcome to the show. If you are a return listener, you know what I'm talking about. So for the new listener, what I want to talk about is... Um, Rules Running Podcast has has uh, always been uh, sort of this podcast uh, about running health, play, you know, family, health, uh, and me living an, as an example of one example of what now are a gajillion people on uh, on a, on an NSNG lifestyle and. Uh, when I started this podcast, um, it was uh, my way to try and give back and sort of be an example to others who might be interesting, interested in it because it really wasn't that uh, well known. And uh, I knew that when I started, I would have been interested in gobbling up any sort of resource, any sort of example, any sort of talk about being an SMG. And long story short, um, I did, I had my, a great four-year run, uh, starting and peaking and sort of settling in, you know, and that entailed uh, weight loss and better health and learning how to uh, perform on my long runs uh, on an NSNG lifestyle, you know, being fat adapted, learning about and being in uh, nutritional ketosis and all that good stuff. And then after the four years, you know, I struggled two years, uh, little by little, and, uh, you know, fell off. Um, which It was still easy for me to do things like, uh, you know, fast and consume, you know, NSNG stuff. And, you know, th- I knew... I, I, I was very familiar, but I also sort of allowed myself to to fall off and just become, just, I guess, eat and drink like the, uh, quote, in quotes, normal person would do, right? American, uh, sort of standard American diet type stuff. And as a really bad experiment proved that when you're not an SNG when you, or when you're not when you when you consume the standard American diet you will uh, you know start to gain weight you will increase uh, at least for me gain weight not feel good get some weird ailments and symptoms you know things like uh, like uh, you know, like rashes and maybe you know and, and mess around with hormones and start to like lose a bit of hair which also could contribute to just the fact that I'm getting older but things like you know getting a uh, getting a blood test and uh, 
the fasting blood glucose, you know, just being higher than it's, uh, I guess, ever been in the past <clears throat> uh, 10 years. I'm like, oh, I'm older and that's happening. That's not good. You know, that's not good. So I knew what to do. But knowing what to do is one thing and actually doing something and sticking to it is another. <clears throat> so, you know, <clears throat> I took that that bit of news and figured that I needed to take some steps to sort of track my 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 glucose. And so I went and got strips. <clears throat> well, I, I sought out strips and then realized I can probably get these things on a sort of health family savings account sort of situation and sort of, you know, using funds that are pre-tax. Uh, <clears throat> so then I, I looked around online for online stores that uh, accepted that stuff. So there was the, there was one store and then there was, there was Amazon apparently. Apparently Amazon allows you to use your FSA funds towards eligible products and so while perusing the selection, I found like I found not only could I get my strips and and blood glucose monitor, but I could get a brand that also does ketone testing, ketone monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. So you know I got that, and I was kind of excited about it. You know I hadn't done I hadn't done uh, the the blood glucose monitoring before. I've never owned the ketone blood monitor before and um i've always used the piss strips <clears throat> so here i was not only was i able to eventually able to check my blood glucose but alongside i could do ketones and i knew what was involved with <clears throat> with uh with shifting my um i guess my blood concentration of of things Right, it, it all it was it was it was diet and uh, and some some level of uh, activity. So a lot, you know, so you know, getting getting tough news about my my it wasn't tough, but getting unfavorable news about my my blood test was one sort of wake up call, and then getting excited about getting this new gear to blood test blood was was sort of like another sort of uh, motivator. And then I joined uh, a gym alongside my wife because she needed, she wanted us to go in together so that it would help her stay motivated. And I found out that I really enjoyed enjoyed it. So that was another motivator that sort of helped me along this trajectory of getting into to better health and, and stuff. You know, and as the past several days went on, I've, you know, I could see through. Oh, I also picked up through uh, the through the purchase. I also picked up a a new scale that did, you know, that allowed me to track my weight along other along with other um, measurements through the scale and have it transmitted onto an app so that I could track it along. You know, so I'm tracking glucose. I'm tracking ketones. I'm tracking, you know, weight and. Uh, body, body fat percentages and bo- body mass and all that other stuff and and I'm actually kind of digging it then I'm paying attention to heart rate heart rate uh, monitors while I go out and do some activities working on my zone two and also paying attention to my resting heart rate um just you know just kind of getting all of this motivation in the in 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 the spirit of just getting back into better health and and the other motivator too is, uh, as as it pertains to being in the gym, is that you know I'm getting fit and stronger, and that's exactly what I need because I've committed myself to the a fifty k later in February. So, you know, everything seems to sort of be going uh, the way I'm in, in a way that I'm happy with. Today, I, I submitted my registration for the fifty k. And uh, yeah, and then quickly turned around and submitted as an expense for uh, health and wellness through work, so I can hopefully get get that reimbursement. But yeah, and uh, you know, I think the, the past four or five days, I've just been watching my weight. This literally like a pound a day, you know. So it just shows for me to to lose that quick. It just shows that I was really, really off and. 
I'm, uh, you know, I've, I've got from this get go, I've got like 20 pounds I'd like to lose. So yeah, that's that. Do you need a website? If you're an individual, a consultant, a group or small business and need a site, or maybe you have an existing site, I can help. How about graphic design? Do you need need a design for a t-shirt, logo, product, business cards? You know, maybe you need help with designing and developing a brand. I'm not an expert, but I do have the tools and the techniques to get the job done. How about a podcast? Yep, like this thing. This thing's a silly little show. Um, do you Are you looking to set up a podcast of your own? Are you looking to reach an audience? Uh, promote your business via podcast? Well, Abadam Studios. That's right, Abadam Studios. Yeah, so that's Abadam Studios. Abadamstudios.com, A-B-A-D-A-M-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. Check it out. I'm back. It's another day, and I'm on the road again. I am going to fetch uh, a couple of drinks for my wife and my daughter. I just wrapped up cooking uh, a tri-tip roast, but I didn't roast it. I like to cut up my own tri-tip steaks out of a roast. I used to, you know, shop around for uh, steaks, even the uh, petite sirloins if I didn't find it. And uh, one day, and I think I might have talked about this already on the podcast, but one day I, you know, I rang the bell for the meat guy, the butcher, or whatever you call it, at the meat department at the... Uh, the, the uh, the Knob Hill grocery store here where I live. I asked him for uh, for the tri-tip steaks if he had any. He says, oh, we should. So he walked over to the, uh, the meat section, the refrigerated meat section, and I had already looked for, you know, my pre-cut tri-tip steaks and individually, or not individually, but, but packaged... Uh, Appropriately in whatever uh, portions that make sense. I already saw that they didn't have any, but he checked, and then he's like, "Well, you can just grab this roast, and here it is, try tip, and you could just cut up your own steaks." Have you ever done it? Done it? I'm like, "No." They like, "Come over here, let me teach you." So it was a nice chat and demonstration on how I can cut my own steaks. I guess, you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm saving any money, but it sure saves me time from having to look for a, for it pre-cut, you know. And I can make it as thick as I want, or as thin as I want. So, you know, we do steaks pretty common. Uh, steaks are pretty common at the house. My, uh, the boys are, you know, enjoy it. One more than the other and uh, I like it as a meal I like it as a snack I like it here or there <laughs> I like it everywhere and uh, yeah so it was uh, it turned out to be it turned out to be a lot of a lot of me- uh, a lot of a lot of meat <laughs> and before that I had cooked uh some eggplant torta. You know, I had pre-roasted uh, some eggplants. I had pre-roasted a couple eggplants, and uh, they needed to be prepared before they just turned. You know, so what's involved with that is, uh, you know, peeling off the skin of the eggplant because I had roasted over a, a gas grill, and the skin gets pretty charred and whatnot so you know uh, it allows the insides of the eggplant to steam and soften and cook real good so peels the, all of the, the charred skin off and I get some several paper towels and I mash the thing flat and it you know it, it extracts a lot of the, the water that's in the uh, that's in the vegetable and so I've got this flat mess of um, eggplant substance that sounds so delicious and all I do is I take a little bowl and I beat an egg then uh, and salt and pepper it and I beat the egg and I then I dunk the uh, the flattened 
squashed <laughs> eggplant in the, uh, the, egg, the the beaten egg, you know, and I then what I'll do is I have some pre-cooked ground beef, some pretty good ground beef. I'll take three or four uh, scoops of, with a teaspoon, you know, and uh, drop drop the uh, ground beef in the mixture of the egg with the eggplant. I'll get a nice heated pan and I'll drizzle olive oil on the pan and basically make, it's basically an eggplant omelet with uh, ground beef in it. So I had to do that. That was done. That was good. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Oh, and while I was doing that, I had meatballs going. I, we had some store-bought meatballs for the kids. And all I did was uh, heat up a smaller pan, drizzle some olive oil, and I just uh, heated. They were already they were pre-made and cooked, but it was just a matter of heating them through. And I... Uh, I think they were sort of like a mozzarella, sort of herbed and herbs, sort of Italian style meatball. So my daughter and my son, my oldest son, wanted that for dinner. Then my daughter decided she didn't want it. <laughs> so it's like, uh, kids, I want this. Then like, nah, I don't want it. Like, oh, what are you gonna have? I guess you're gonna have leftovers from lunch. Leftovers from lunch at the Lucy Lewis Bar- Bar- Smokehouse Barbecue. There was some leftover, a leftover side dish of mac and cheese that she ate. And uh, yeah, so that was that was me in the kitchen. Uh, let's see. I uh, I'm uh, I don't remember this. I I can't remember. Whether or not I talked about, you know, taking a break from alcohol. And, you know, when the new year rolled around, I was feeling, like, inspired, you know, to make it a goal to just make some healthy changes and to cut the alcohol. And uh, I didn't put it out there in the universe. I didn't put it on the social media. I didn't talk to my wife about it. I just said that's what I wanted to do. And guess what? I'm pretty sure it was like the next day, you know, I failed at, I failed at it. And, you know, that was early January, the beginning of the year. But with all of this sort of, uh, you know, new, reinvigorated sort of, uh, regaining health and getting some regular exercise and uh, monitoring my blood and all that good stuff, um, you know, and cutting the alcohol, you know, you know, and uh, finding myself back in nutritional ketosis. It's just now it's all those things compounded, you know, have uh, made it more um, easier for me to to not even think about the drinks about the alcohol because you know as some of you might know you know it's it can be uh, it can sort of take over you know your, your mind your thoughts it was one of those things where like it starts off I'll, uh, I'll go home and then I'll prepare dinners and it's getting kind of you know towards the tail end of dinner I'm like okay I guess I want to go have a drink you know then rather than it being like once or twice a week it's sort of like every night you know that's late in the evening i'm gonna go have myself a drink you know it'd be it'd be a bourbon or some sort of whiskey and then not good and uh then at some point uh maybe a few months back i decided you know what Oh, I forgot. Yeah, it was uh, it was in October because my dad had like a death anniversary or something, or September. And then I, I ordered a case of beer, and you know now I'm, you know the the whiskey, you know it's a little it's 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 gluten free, <laughs> right? It's less of a sugar hit than I guess uh, a beer, right? Beer is liquid bread, but I just was feeling sort of like 
out of my mind and figured, you know, I'm going to order a, some beer, you know, and kind of toast to my dad, you know, his memory. And so I, then I started having beer every once in a while. And I would go to, go out to a restaurant with the family. I'm like, oh, I, well, why don't I have a beer? So I found myself sort of becoming uh, sort of the the standard American, standard Western sort of. I had I had I had shifted away from you know NSNG and and I just was just letting myself go. And it was it was easy to to always think about oh let's get another drink um, because at that point I think my 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 system was just had been hijacked right I allowed it to be hijacked with types of foods that I had that I shouldn't be consuming and types of drinks that I shouldn't be consuming and I and I just kept on allowing it to happen um, over the course of you know two years I figure you know it would just kind of be just once in a while then it became a little bit more than once in a while then just really the past sometime in 2019 just really got out of control not like I was out of my mind and now I'm you know I'm and I'm and I'm <laughs> And I'm, you know, I, I still had a handle on making sure I got everything in my life, you know, work and family and and all those things taken care of. But I was just really enjoying stuff. But to a point that, you know, I was paying the price, uh, weight wise, health wise, and and I'm and I'm pretty sure, you know, that it's it made me age faster than than. <laughs> Than, than I should, right? So, hopefully, you know, I could continue on this healthier traje- trajectory and pattern, and and regain a little bit of, of my youth back. <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, what I like is right now I'm not. It's sort of like um, how do you say when. When you learn to not care for sugar or crave sugar, it's it's a whole new world, right? And you can go about walking by a bakery and not care about like yeah, I'm not I'm not hungry for a cookie or a baked good or whatever. Same thing with alcohol, you know, you you can get to a point where you just don't think about it anymore and it doesn't control you. Yeah, that's what that is. So, <clears throat> I'm on my way back, but before I wrap up, you know, it's like nights like this. I am. I'm heading back. I'm heading back. I went to the, uh, I went to the, uh, the little drink shop, right? Picked up something for my wife and my daughter. And uh, it's right next door to the grocery store. And... Yeah. <laughs> if I don't have anything to drink at home, I would be I would have been like well, I could go pick up a bottle of Jim Beam or I could I pick up a, a thing of beer, whatever I want my my tastes were were um were, would have been, right? And it and that that sort of thought and the emotion under it bad it was bad you know not a and, and uh it's just I don't know how to I don't know how to talk about it but it definitely you know it reminded me like uh when I started several years ago trying to figure out NSNG for myself you know I I uh losing weight and then I was I wasn't like 100% um I didn't understand you 
know, a lot. You know, I knew basically, yep, no sugar, no grains. But I, I was still trying to get information and understand um, it was more than just saying no sugar, no grains. Because So what does that leave you? No sugar, no grains. It leaves you with... Um, you know, meat, vegetables, right? And, you know, and at the time, the information that I obtained was, well, you know, you can have cheese, good cheese, right? right? There's fat and cheese. And yeah, yeah, sure, there's a, there's a the dairy sugar in, in the product, but, you know, the, the, the amount of fat in the cheese will sort of buffer that whatever content of sugar in there and it's, it's okay right and then I, I, the information I got along along the same time was you know use fat to buffer the impact of sugar and you can also use it to yeah you can use it to buffer the, the impact of sugar so I was like okay I'm gonna have this wine and then I'm gonna also have cheese and then that cheese is gonna you know reduce that impact of the, the sugar hit from the wine because if you if you if you don't know for some reason um wine is sugar and alcohol right it's juice with alcohol and back then that was years ago i want to say five years ago maybe the yeah, I, I, I was sort of in that same pattern of I was really enjoying wine and I, and I was trying to get the NSNG and I had made some positive changes in my 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 body and uh, but I still wanted to have my wine but I didn't so I had to figure out how can I I guess cheat and have my wine I'll have cheese and that'll allow me to make, that'll make it okay to have my wine but the problem was I wasn't having like once in a while a glass I'd have like two or three glasses right <laughs> on a sitting you know and uh, that so guess what happened I started my weight started climbing you know I, I had I had been losing trying to shift into NSNG early on and then I started going the other direction I'm like oh my right and uh so I had to cut cut that sort of that ritual of having wine and cheese. I still kept the cheese, but I just didn't have the wine, you know. And the wine was causing me to eat more cheese than I ordinarily would because I was trying to use it. Basically, cheese was a condom, right? And the wine and getting getting the sugar hit from the wine was getting pregnant. And I didn't want to get pregnant from the wine, so I was putting on a condom of cheese to sort of help things out. But I was just having too much, too much cheese condoms that it was pack. It was allowing me to pack on the weight, <laughs> right? So dumb. So that was then, and then uh, I guess you know recently, you know, wrapping up 2019, I was just I found myself back there in that sort of pattern of just indulging in all of the drink and. Uh, there was no there was, yeah, there was no cheese or anything to buffer the hit of the bourbon it, it it there was none of that but you know it was just a bad deal bad deal you know and I was I probably was dealing with a level of being depressed like you know what I am out of shape and I I, I gotta set myself straight but you know and uh, you know and uh it just wasn't it wasn't good uh yeah funny how things excuse me la 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 I'm yawning it's funny how I mean I don't know why that I went through that that low patch and uh just trying to make do, trying to make the best do the best that I can you know, but you know, maybe sometimes at some point, you know, I was really trying to figure it out, and 
things just kind of, kind of came together. And, you know, who's to say, right, five years from now that I kind of hit another rough patch and I kind of go through this cycle again? I hope not. Um, I'm, uh, I like where I'm at now, right? I'm, uh, oh, here's interesting. Here's the interesting thing. And I, God, I swear I almost have talked about it already, but I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm not a fan of the, the, the seltzer beverages with, uh, with sort of the infused fruit flavor, you know, like the LaCroix and stuff like that. At least when they first came out and I thought it was really stupid because me and my, my own NSN genus figured like, you don't need that. All you need is water to your coffee. You know, what the heck, you know, and the occasional whiskey, right? You don't need no LaCroix, you know, just cut it out because the whole thing with the can and the, and the, and the fizzy is like, that's just it's just you're still kind of stuck in that soda mindset you know you want to break that soda mindset you know just ditch the can but guess what you know i'm that guy now right at work you know we've got we've got a stock full of a stock a fridge stock stocked up with Lacroix and the occasional spindrift and other versions of other brands of similar seltzer beverages and i you know, in my in my uh, in my mode of sort of uh, in my being in my lows and not caring so much about what I was drinking and eating, you know, then I sort of like I don't care. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this Lacroix. Right? <laughs> I sort of stepped away from thinking of, of of how I previously thought, and and it wasn't a bad thing. Because it turns out, you know, I developed uh, my preferences as far as as far as those types of beverages, and they're not bad, you know. They're not wine. They're not alcohol. You know, they're not whiskey. That being overconsumed by a guy like I had been, and and getting unhealthy and stuff, right? So, it turns out now I I I. I get myself some of the Spindrift, the lemon flavored one, and and it's just a lem- lemon flavored seltzer water, right? No sugar, whatever, and it's a a cleaner alternative to to the alcohol and the beer and all that stuff. So I've been basically having having that beverage, uh, you know, at home, you know, when I feel like I want to drink. And it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm craving the alcohol. I just like, now I've sort of re- replaced that, that, uh, that part of my, my, uh, my routine that had sought out the alcohol and I had replaced it with, um, some active, it's not even a routine yet as right now, but it's just an activity of, you know, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a little bu- bubbly water. So I just you know I thought that was it was interesting you know that like oh okay I actually I guess I this is something that I can can enjoy versus me my old self who would enjoy you know um, the alcohol. So it's just uh, interesting to me that you know it's it's just another thing that's sort of. I'm having to learn, it's funny, like, you know, being, knowing as much as I've known and done what I've done, you know, I could still kind of lose my way and and then find my way here and discovering new things, you know, like the combination of all of these activities, you know, from the exercise to getting better health and all of the health tracking and all that stuff and and watching change happen and and finding uh healthier sort of habits or patterns uh to replace the old stuff it's just it's just you know i don't know yeah i'm i feel good i feel healthy you know i came off of uh I, i did a workout this morning with my wife and a friend you know and i'm feeling you know like I'm feeling the soreness that comes with, with with working out, you know, and I, and in these sessions I'm also testing myself out with my leg turn turnover on the treadmill sessions, you know. It's it's like I'm feeling good because I feel like 
that's going to help me, you know, on the 22nd when I take on uh, uh, the 50K. So, you know, it's just just trying to get right. Just really trying to get right and feel good. And, and uh, yeah. Well, um, I'm, now I'm just rambling. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you when I catch you. Remember, folks, hug your friends, hug your family, and go run something. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast. Yeah.